Spencer Dinwiddie's production has finally shown up, Reggie Bullock's floor spacing was crucial as always, the secret weapon Frank Nielakina shockingly clamped up Phoenix's backcourt, while it was your typical 33 piece as a part of the Luka special, which allowed the undeniably dangerous team from the Big D to even the Western Conference semifinals at three games. Regardless of what happens on Sunday, Doncic and the Mavs giving the 64-win powerhouse Suns a run for their money has been extremely impressive. So what's the scariest part about the 2022 playoff Mavericks attack? What happens back in the Valley for Game 7? And how does this postseason run impact Dallas's future? Stay tuned for a breakdown of all that and more. But right before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 11.4% of you watching right now are subscribed. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. Lastly, stay updated on the NBA and the channel by following me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepLoveHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. You're not going to believe this, but since back in Game 3 when Coach Jason Kidd activated defensive specialist Frank Nilakina into the rotation, the former New York Knicks number 8 overall draft selection in 2017 has held Chris Paul and Devin Booker to a combined 3 for 40 shooting from the field. Proving a take I made to be spot on way back in the offseason of 2021 in this video right here, when GM Nico Harrison picked him up, 2022's Western Conference semis have seen Neil Aquino's 7-1 wingspan and lateral footwork have a massive impact off the bench. Frank compiled a game-changing four steals to go along with a block, helping nod this best of seven up at three games apiece, making life a living hell for the point god and D-Book. This may seem like a rushed pass from Landry Shamit, but Booker's usually able to get to that spot in time to catch it, and really it's the ball denial and general physicality from the Frenchman which forces this turnover. Displaying some series changing clamps, here he cuts off Booker's passing lane to Chris Paul, forcing Devin to hang onto it, and then watch the hilariously elite rotation from Frank to pop up and also cut off the passing lane to Crowder in the corner. Despite being whistled for a reach in on this play, Neil Aquino's desperateness to muck Phoenix's offense up was evident as he top locks Chris Paul, springs off him, and goes right at Booker. With Jason Kidd playing Frank more and more minutes each game, the Suns' offense has become increasingly stagnant. Guarding the inbounds on CP, this stunt over to Bridges, plus wherewithal and activity to knock away Mikhail's outlet to the paint, leads to Frank's secondly utterly impressive steal of the game. Despite some great initial defense from Bullock right here at the point of attack, Neil Aquino still leaves his matchup in Chris Paul alone, predicting Booker is going to beat Reggie off the dribble, and that was a good call, as Frank's right there for yet another highlight defensive play, stuffing Devin's jumper on the baseline. Look at this physical off-ball pressure before Booker's even close to getting his flare screen, as Frank sticks to Devin like glue as Biombo sets the pick, knocking away the ball with his relentless 99 overall hands. He does all the dirty work that casual fans won't notice, and while he doesn't do much offensively, those plays we just looked at show you exactly why the 23-year-old was a lottery pick four years ago, as Neil Aquino's got an incredible combination of instincts and size, which has changed the personality of this series. The five-year pro has been one of the main influencers on Chris Paul, having scored just 14 baskets and racking up 18 turnovers since turning 37 before Game 3 exceptional adjustment from the Mavs coaching staff to trust Frank to come in and have an impact, not having played regularly for a while. This chess move from Jason Kidd is what playoff coaching is all about, trusting the bench pieces your GM went out and got for you, regardless of if they've been in a rhythm or not, just trusting they stayed ready and put the work in, potentially getting a storybook ending out of it. Moving on to Luka Doncic, and after this we'll talk about Spencer Dinwiddie plus Reggie Bullock among others, and we'll cap the video off by looking at what this season means in the long run for the Mavs. Thursday night in Dallas saw the face of the franchise in Luka tally more total points, assists, and rebounds than Devin Booker and Chris Paul combined. The superstar's array of elusive step-back jumpers, dribble combos, and passing chops may be eye candy to witness, but what's most impressive about Doncic is that his production's consistent. Whether he finds that superstar shooting stroke or not, it's admirable that the Slovenian sensation always gives you everything he has in the tank on both ends of the floor. 
No player in NBA history had averaged 36 and 6 in the playoffs before this, but Luka's averages of 33, 9, and 9 in 2022 would change that. Averaging the exact same numbers as the reigning finals MVP and Giannis Adetokounmpo in these playoffs, Luka Doncic is now tied for the third fastest player in NBA history to reach 700 playoff points, only trailing Wilt Chamberlain and Michael Jordan. After the Suns took Game 5, Booker lay on the ground supposedly mimicking Doncic and then said to a courtside camera, that's the Luka special. Luka's legitimately got hammered throughout his career on some plays, specifically by Marcus Morris of the Clippers, but Doncic said to the media that he didn't care about Booker's Luka special moment and only took exception to the trash talking when Phoenix was feeling good about themselves. Regardless, it's clear the Mavericks superstar took Booker's naive attempt to hinder his reputation personally, adding fuel to Doncic's fire in an elimination game. I'm not inside Luka's head, but poking the bear and potentially motivating our league's best young player, whose history in winner go home games now consists of a combined 117 points in three outings against the Clippers and Suns, may not have been smart for D-Book to do. Of course, Devin has a Hall of Fame career in the making just like Luka, and we can't dismiss how special the face of the Valley's franchise is. But in terms of their all-around games as of this moment right now, Doncic is just one or two steps up on the ladder in comparison to Booker. That doesn't take away anything from Devin, but the facts are that without Chris Paul, D-Book missed the playoffs for the first five years of his career. Conversely, without a single all-star next to him, Luka deserves every bit of credit for single-handedly reversing the fortunes of Dallas's franchise. Luka turned the previously bottom-feeding Mavs into a playoff team by his second season, and in three of his first four years in the association, Dallas has made the postseason. Booker has a stacked Phoenix core around him, consisting of the number one pick in Luka's draft class, DeAndre Ayton, phenoms on the wing like a DPOY candidate in Mikhail Bridges, and another elite 3 and D guy like Jay Crowder, not to mention one of the greatest point guards of all time, and a ton of depth overall. Booker's cast of talent around him is much better than Doncic's, but the best part about Luka's game is his ability to make the ultimate most out of the four other guys around him at any given time. Doncic may be young, but he's an outstanding leader. As you can tell, his teammates love hitting shots for him and thrive off vibing from Luka's creation and enthusiasm. Jalen Brunson could be an all-star next year, but as of right now, Luka's supporting cast doesn't have a single one of those. Having said that, the 28-point-per-game score from the first round in the Villanova legend Jalen Brunson has been a premier go-to option since struggling in the opening games of the Phoenix series. JB's arrival in this series was massive, and another great sign if you're a Mavs fan is that another player who can have his nights of resembling an all-star in the trade deadline acquisition Spencer Dinwiddie has also just arrived in the Western Conference semis. Dinwiddie nailed five of his seven three-point attempts, crucial points in a must-win with all the pressure in the world on him. Spencer must step up to the moment and produce like the player Nico Harrison traded for if the Mavs have a shot at winning game seven. With his six foot six frame at point guard, if Spencer attacks the rim offensively and stays active, the former Brooklyn Net can make his presence felt and even be the hero. Speaking of potential heroes, the X factor for Dallas all year long has been the former North Carolina Tar Heel and Reggie Bullock. After not having been too efficient for most of the series, Reginald Rydell lit it up to make five of his 11 triples on Thursday night as the eight year NBA veteran seemed to put his nine games of playoff experience coming into this run with Dallas to good use. I could see Phoenix closing it out on their home floor, as oddly, every game of this series has been a blowout with the home team winning. While Dallas has a chance to shock the world, regardless of what happens, this construction around Luka right now seems to work. Taking a team that won a franchise most 64 games to 7 in round 2 for such a young bunch bodes very well for Maverick fans for the next half decade plus. What's your prediction for Game 7 of Phoenix vs. Dallas? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ernest Burrell, who says, Scariest part of the heat 
is that people still don't take them seriously, despite being the number one seed with four All-Stars, missing dozens of games, a lot of well-coached talent, and hard work with the deepest team in the playoffs. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.